well. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, bye Henry. Okay, bye. Bye bye. bye. Careful still life, the luncheon on the table with its translucent glass, luxuriant fruits, and snowy linen, becomes the focal point for a group of relatively plain and ordinary people who are magically transformed by Renoir's glowing color. In the lower left-hand corner, Renoir's fiance plays with... The Phillips Collection, a traveling collage of paintings that feature the world's masterpieces of Impressionism. You don't have to know a lot about art to understand Impressionism. It's a style, maybe a time, when the artist found that reality wasn't really real, that the brush can paint from the mind as well as the eye, that certain shapes and forms that in themselves are little can tell more than just brushstroke smooth reality. The artists are a who's who of art in the last century. Renoir, Picasso, Degas. But it's not the names, it's the results. The shapes and images that they left on canvas that stay in the mind after you leave. At the Art Center at the fairgrounds. Just get a little bit closer to the That's people. Fine. Story of this, bring your own. Could I have your attention? Could I have your attention, please? Has everyone read the rules and procedures? If you haven't, don't panic. I'm going to read them right now, so don't worry about it. But I'm going to go over them real fast, so listen carefully. As you draw they are the refugees tile, from dining, kitchen, and card the tables. Table. They've taken a drawing room game and moved it to a hall. This is the Oklahoma City Scrabble Club. Scrabble was invented in 1931, the heart of the Depression. It may be just a coincidence that the game is having a brisk revival. It's not really a complicated game. Points are gathered based on words formed on a grid. Most of these players are good, though. Many are here because they ran out of competition at home. So, axe, dot, and spat. So that's 2, 3, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 22. I started asking around just people that I knew and asked them if they liked Scrabble and I found so many people that liked it I thought well why not let's try a club that sounds like fun because so many Scrabble players are isolated and they don't have anybody to play with a lot of these people here tonight have told me I love to play but I never can find anybody to play with and I thought well a Scrabble club will take care of that so M I R E there and I got six that's a triple word score. Three, four, five, six. Six times three is eighteen. Triple is twenty-four. Two times twenty-six. Thirty. Plus fifty for seven letters. <laughs> Back when my wife and I used to play this game at night to see who washed the dishes, I thought fourteen points was a great score. That guy just got eighty. That's out of my league. He'd never wash a dish in my house. But the club members say you don't have to be that good. Just loving the game is enough. Well, if your spouse isn't really good competition anymore, give Alex Corbett a call. He's got a game for you.
Uh, this this area here became a, really a robber's roost. Bell Star, Cole Younger, Jesse and Frank James, Blue Duck. This was one of their hangouts. I love this land. I like to get out and walk in it, in the woods, look at the rocks. And I can envision the old outlaws, their horses, their cattle, their guns, their camps. Tony Hardcastle doesn't keep his vision to himself. What he sees, more importantly, what he feels about the country he grew up in is translated to paper, to print, and to books. Hardcastle may be the most prolific writer in the state. He's written 10 novels, hundreds of articles and newspaper stories. He writes about the West, the old West of eastern and central Oklahoma. His heroes are touched with the kind of reality that keeps readers galloping from chapter to chapter. Great literature? Maybe. Maybe not. But Stony Hardcastle writes to be read and to make a living. The main problem that all beginning writers have is they all want to write the great American novel. They have it in their head. And uh, I, I tried one once, and I think every other writer has tried one. And mine's still laying gathering dust in most of the other manuscripts with the great American novel. There have been a few people who have ever succeeded in writing A Gone with the Wind. Hardcastle may be doing something better than writing the great American novel. Besides sharing his imagination and his stories with readers, he shares something that may be more important, his knowledge about his craft. He teaches commercial writing at Eastern Oklahoma State College, and what he teaches sells. In the past six years, 19 of his students have published novels. That may be a record. Stony Hardcastle's heroes are horse leather tough from another century. But to many of his students, Hardcastle himself is the hero. Um, I guess it's just like any other business, you know, you got your lawyers who uh, help people out, you got doctors. I'm kind of a doctor. I consider myself a doctor of comedy because I feel like laughing is the best therapy. Because, you know, people, you've got to laugh. Because laughing, laughing is the best medicine you got, you know. It's, uh, if, you, if you laugh, you forget about your problems for a second. And I think that that's a big, big difference. Because people love to laugh. Um, people don't laugh enough. I know that. I'm gonna do the fishing bit and I'll do the. I just can't, I gotta put in that girl on Quaaludes because that's all. Oh, I love that. That's, I think that's a funny line that I said last night about I had 30 minutes to kill, so I went and saw the Burt Convy Film Festival. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of went. Who's Burt Convy? Oh, that's dumb. Is this the guy that was going to come get me if we couldn't get my flight? Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Jokers. Uh, it's nice for you people to come out tonight. Uh, I'm glad you were all here. I almost wasn't here. I had dinner. In my mind, I know the stuff is funny. And, uh, so I'm what I'm going to do now is any minute now. figure so, out how fast to go with it. Geez. Those and I, when you've stayed, I think the first thing in your mind is, we have a I hope this is a good set. On this toast out of here, uh, and uh, you can tell usually by the way a crowd is reacting. Or... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just like we had Thanksgiving dinner. I, had, I spent Thanksgiving here at OKC. Uh, we had it at the Hilton. It's, it's I'm always like a little scared when I go right out. It's, um, I'm, uh, I think first, that, and I hope I never that. The only people that work there are 65 years or older. It's a law. It me keep on my toes. I just, and I got a big kick out of Mayor Burns in Chicago, though, she said. Because of this Tylenol incident, don't let your children go trick-or-treating. Now, when you were a kid, did you ever get aspirin in your trick-or-treat bag? Oklahoma, the home of Don Wallace. <laughs> this guy is on Valiums, I know it. Uh, such a, such a serene guy. <laughs> We're fishing with the Johnson Bentley. <laughs> and having a heck of a time. <laughs> These guys kill me. They catch a fish no matter where they go. 
they could be fishing out of their toilets. <laughs> Fifteen pound bass. Look at that baby right there. Yeah. Lift that lid, Harold. I'll get her out of here. Yeah. Man, I catch algae. I'm thinking about having it mounted, all right? <laughs> yeah, it's nice and green. <laughs> Tisdale, the name may soon become synonymous with OU basketball. Two brothers, Wayman number 23, William number 22. But the brothers are not just part of a team. Father, mother, and sister, and others are in the stands every game. There are those who say that families are part of the past, that society is becoming fragmented. But there is a Tisdale family. It exists in a faith. Wayman and William perform devotionals to the gospel beat of bass, guitar, and drum. Friendship Baptist in Tulsa has no church to doze off in. The head of the congregation is the Reverend Tisdale. He ministers over a congregation made for children to grow up and adults to grow old. In. These people are all related, They're all brothers and sisters, some by blood, all by spirit and soul.
name of the church is Friendship Baptist, but they might add another word to that name. Family. a.m., two and a half hours before the sun, long before most people think about going to work. Bus 16 moves out early. Behind the wheel is 38 years of experience in the eyes and hands of the driver, Olin Putnam. Putnam is one of a handful of men that drive the streets of this city with a time machine, a way of getting from here to there for people who don't believe that mass transit is just something that exists for people east of the Mississippi. <laughs> the first run is light, a handful of passengers. Most are regulars, most know Owen, and most men. Putnam driving a bus is more than just steering. Smiling. Well, it's supposed to snow today. <laughs> I know it. Is that the icing? Yeah, right. <laughs> I hate that ice. Some passengers talk, some just ride. Back when Olin started driving a bus in 1943, the buses were full. Now they seldom are. But for the people who do ride, the transportation is just as necessary. I said we had a 60% chance. Oh, and the job is usually the same as it always has been. Get them there on time, get them there safely. Hurting a dozen times or more than traffic 50 miles a day makes the last part tricky. He stays on time with the watch here on the longest safety record in the city. It's been 34 years since Putnam scraped a fender in a chargeable accident. The next time you see the gas needle droop on the family car, give some thought to this. He's probably got an empty seat. Hop the door. This is a story about patience, time. Time that's spent like wealth by someone who knows its worth and yet parts with each second freely, as if hours were pennies and dollars were nothing. Dr. Edwin Andrews is a shipbuilder. He's never sailed, but his heart and hands live in a time when the world moved on the wind. Why do I do this? The ship's fascinating. Everything that was on the ship had a very good reason for being there. There was nothing extra put on the ship. And finding out why all the devices were on the ship is fascinating. And it's interesting. And it's a love of history and enjoying working with your hands. The ships were different for different periods and modified over the years. Finding out why has always fascinated me. The pride of Andrew's craft is the Beagle, the ship Charles Darwin sailed to a new way of thinking about man and his world. The model is on display now at the Oklahoma City Zoo, and it's detailed to the last knot in rigging. It represents thousands of hours of work of both the hand and the mind.
I confess, when I first contacted Dr. Andrews about doing this story, I thought I would see him build a complete ship. But I found that for each piece carved and shaped, a page is turned, a note is taken. In landlocked Oklahoma, he learns details that would astound an 18th century able-bodied seaman. Well, the, you don't make the ship for the people in Oklahoma, you make it for yourself. And there may be a few people that just might know, but the enjoyment is in finding out and learning why the various conventions were used by the Admiralty and the reason for doing it and then doing it correctly. And as long as you know that it was done and done correctly, that's the important thing. been to an OU basketball game for a while, you'll find that something is happening now, gentlemen. For example, you don't even have to watch the players. You know what's happening in the court. It's just a hardcore of fans that egg the others on. Maybe it's the cheerleaders. But you have to give credit to opponents that bring the wild style of play to Norman that this crowd loves. Teams like the OSU Cowboys. By the way, Cowboy fans, I'm not meaning to ignore you, but Gallagher Hall has always been known for its own brand of round ball insanity. This is something relatively new for the southern reaches of the state. Whatever happened, OU fans are getting the message. There's a new game in town. And the ball doesn't have to come around. Thank you. 